everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a look at ASUS AI Suite 3, and this will be for the Z87 motherboards that are for the Haswell processor. This is a new AI suite. It comes with the whole line of motherboards that ASUS makes. Depending on the motherboard uh, segmentation, you will either have less or more depending on the board itself. This is going to be a basic overview. Right now I have the Deluxe board on here, the Z87 Deluxe. So this has Dual Intelligent Processor 4 or DIP 4. So this will be one of the more populated AI suites. So let's go ahead and take a look at the initial interface. Of course you have Dual Intelligent Processor 4, AI Charger, USB Boost 3.0. Easy update, network, eye channel, eye control, system information, USB BIOS flashback, USB charger, Wi-Fi Go, Wi-Fi engine. Down below you have your CPU frequencies, you have your CPU voltages if you want to look at those. You have your CPU temperature and your motherboard temperature and also you have your fan, your fan uh, speeds. We'll go ahead and start with Dual Intelligent 4. Uh, processors 4 or the 4-way optimization. Basically by clicking this you could go ahead and optimize your system for its best configuration. So what it'll do is it'll shift to away mode so to minimize power and and fan noise after you go ahead and set that. To the right of that is your TPU. This is going to be your CPU performance. If I had this overclocked, it would tell me how much more I would, you know, where I would have it overclocked, what percentage. This is my strap underneath. Fan Expert 2, CPU fan benchmark. I have not checked that, but as you can see, I have one fan connected. Digi Power Control, Optimized Phase Control is off. Active Frequency Mode is off. EPU, this is my energy saving, energy uh, saving. Uh, settings, how many watts am I saving, you got add-on SATA power here, you also have add-on USB power. Basically what I could do is I can shut off USB ports and SATA ports if I'm away or if I don't need them. CPU power and of course your power saving mode here, this is your power saving report, it'll show you how much power you're saving. To the right of that we have auto. Auto means if we set it on auto, it'll automatically, based on the demands, it'll automatically go up and down and set your CPU either to energy saving mode, away mode, etc. High performance, which is the airplane, this is going to keep it in a ready state, so as soon as you need the performance, it's going to be there for you. Then you have max power saving. Under max power saving, basically, what does that mean? Power saving, it's going to save you the maximum amount of power possible and then of course away mode. So after looking at that we could go ahead to the TPU and when we look at TPU let's go ahead and change this to your CPU, the CPU frequency first. Basically this is how you could adjust your, core, your, your frequencies. So right now of course my turbo boost is at 39 which is uh, the, the uh, standard thur turbo boost for the 4770K Intel Core i7 fourth generation processor and if you want to change it just go ahead and click it up or you could use your slider here. So we'll go ahead and set that back to 39. Now you could also change your cores. If you don't want all cores to be the same you could go ahead and click. There we go. You can go ahead and change your core and then change your settings on your cores, each individual core. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and say, change that so to make sure that all four cores are at 39. Now of course this is your, your CPU frequency for your power. This one here shows your, your uh, base clock straps. You have 100 MHz, 125, 167, and 250. As with uh, when Sandy Bridge first came out, if you remember, we stopped really using the base clock. We didn't normally tweak that. If you do want to tweak it, the most you want to go is maybe to 105, but you really don't have to worry about it now. Basically, if you play with your cores, get all your cores where you want to go, you'll be fine. 
Load profile and save profile. Once you get your settings, you go ahead and click save profile, save, save the name. Whenever you need it, click load. You also have an undo button and an apply button. Now let's go up to the voltages. As you can see up here, we have adaptive and manual. You have an offset voltage. Normally when I'm, when I'm overclocking, I'm going to put it on manual, I'm going to set my manual voltage, and that's what I'm going to keep it at. I don't like adaptive. Adaptive means that the voltage is going to go up and down based on the, the need of the, the CPU, and it can overvolt the CPU. CPU cache voltage, you also have adaptive and manual. I have not played with that. I really haven't needed it. I got this system to 4.7 uh, gigahertz. I think that's a fine overclock. Uh, put about 1.275 volts into it. Changed a couple of the power phase settings and that was all I needed to do. Underneath that you have your DRAM voltage, your analog I.O., PCH core voltage, CPU input voltage, system agent voltage, digital I.O. voltage, VTDDR, and the PCH VLX voltage. Again underneath, save profile, load profile, undo, and apply. Let's go ahead to our EPU. EPU, these are your power saving modes. So let's start to auto. If we want to go to auto, we're going to keep that on auto. It will change it and this it'll use these auto settings or you can set them yourself. Monitor off 30 minutes, sleep one hour, it'll go to sleep. It'll use a specific pan, fan profile that you want, standard, performance, silent, however you want to do it. Then you can go to high performance. Now with high performance, basically this is going to say, all right, when am I going to shut the computer off and when am I going to uh, shut the monitor off? Max power saving mode. You have a little bit more there. Of course, you can, you can, figure, you can figure your max CPU power that you want to use, you know, like how many watts total do you want the CPU to, to pull at all times. Of course, monitor, monitor off time, fan profiles, etc. And of course, away mode. Now if you look at away mode you have the voltage, voltage decrement auto or manual. You have the configured max CPU power, fan profile, you can mute your speakers and then you also have the option of turning off SATA and USB ports. Of course defaults undo apply. Let's go to the Digi Plus power control. Under the Digi Plus power control, this is where you can change your CPU load line calibration, your thermal control, current capability, CPU voltage frequency, phase control, active frequency mode, you can set that on or off, and basically it's just sliders. Under phase control, you can set it from standard to manual adjustment. I normally keep it on extreme when I'm, when I'm overclocking or optimized, either or. Thermal control, I normally don't play with. Fixed frequency, I just shut the spread spectrum off and leave it at that. And now let's go to Fan Expert 2. Fan Expert 2, basically, you have different settings for your different fans. You have four headers on this motherboard so of course you're going to have four chassis fans and then you're going to have a CPU fan. Right now I'm using a Corsair H100i so I basically have that set to my Corsair Link 2 so it kind of registers this kind of invalid right now because I'm controlling it via that and not Fan, fan Expert 2. But basically what you could do is, you will have a graph here when you have everything done. You could change it to RPM mode from smart mode. And then all you need to do is just bring your graphs up and it'll map it out on where you want your fans to be at what temperatures. You can go with fast spin up time, fast spin down time, etc. Or fan, I'm sorry, not fast. If you click back here, you could also do a fan tuning. This will auto-tune your system for you, so you don't have to play with anything. You could save your profiles and load your profiles here. Next thing that will come to is the AI charger. Of course, AI charger, if you want to charge something, just go ahead and plug in your tablet, and it'll give you three times the speed of, of uh, charging. USB Boost 
you have three modes, turbo, UASP, and normal. Of course, when you plug something in, if you have a UASP external uh, hard drive enclosure, you could use a UASP. If you're using a hard drive enclosure that doesn't have UASP, you could set it to turbo, or even if you're using a USB flash drive, you could set that to turbo. Excuse me. Use ASUS Easy Update. Basically, it's exactly what it says. Check for updates. Network eye control, you can control your network with this. Easy start, you click auto, it'll auto detect your settings, set your profiles, etc. Do a quick connection, you're there and, and done in a minute. System information, you'll have three settings for that. You'll have your motherboard, you'll have your CPU, and you will also have your SPD on your memory. USB BIOS flashback, basically, very simple. Put your USB, uh, put your BIOS on a USB key, put it in the BIOS flashback link, go ahead and check for new BIOS, download it, and just go ahead and uh, use it through here. USB charger. <laughs> then of course we have Wi-Fi Go. Wi-Fi Go has multiple options. You can use Cloud Go, Remote Desktop, DLNA Media Hub, File Transfer, Smart Sensor Control, Remote Keyboard and Mouse, Capture and Send. So basically you got a camera, you want to capture it, send it to your phone, whatever. Capture it, send it. You can set this up, this system up to be a server itself and that's how I'll show you how to do that with Wi-Fi Engine. You can either set it up to be a client, or you can set it up to be an access point. And basically, once you set that up to be an access point, you're basically using this as your, as your router. So basically, that's everything. Uh, I don't know if I showed you the little mini, uh, mini bar, but the mini bar basically goes down on the right-hand side just above your uh, your quick links, quick launches, and this is for your power settings, auto, high performance, of course power saving mode, and then of course your away mode. So we'll bring that back down there. Let's go ahead and bring it back to dual intelligent, and there you have it. This has been the ASUS AI Suite 3 for the mainstream segment basically of the uh, Z87 line of motherboards. Thank you for watching. Make sure you visit us at www.hightechlegion.com to read the full review on this motherboard. Of course you're watching the video now at uh, High Tech Legion's YouTube channel so make sure you subscribe, hit the button down there. Visit us on Facebook, like us on Facebook at Facebook.com HTL Reviews. Also, you can tweet about us and follow us on Twitter at Twitter.com High Tech Legion. And also remember, with over a thousand videos uploaded, if you haven't seen it at High Tech Legion, you might not have seen it at all. Stay thirsty, my friends. I'll see you the next time. Bye bye.